If you're watching this, you probably already know that becoming a data analyst has been more competitive than ever. More and more people are trying to break through, uncertainty looming over IT jobs because of AI tools such as ChatGPT, and the recent layoffs in big tech don't make it any better. So should you really become a data analyst in 2023? The short answer, yes. Data is the new oil, it's AI's food. Demand for data roles is just gonna get higher and higher as time goes on. But where do you start and how to make sure to go through this journey as efficiently as possible? That's why I'm here. I'm gonna give you an actionable step by step roadmap designed for this purpose. We'll go over what immediate skills you need to master, the tools and trends to keep up to date with, as well as how to optimize your learning to put yourself ahead of 99% of competition. Let's begin. The two core skills you need to know as a data analyst are SQL and a BI tools such as Tableau or Power BI. There are other more skills you need to add to your arsenal, but let's start with these two essential ones. Data speaks SQL, as databases are everywhere. And as a data analyst, you'll need to speak SQL too. I've designed a roadmap that covers most of the essential SQL concepts to master, which you can find in a link in the description. Of course, data query language is the most fundamental skill to know for data analysts. However, it's becoming more and more important to be familiar with database design and have solid data modeling skills. Learning SQL entails that you first need to decide on an RDBMS. There's a lot of them. MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and the list goes on. As a beginner, it doesn't really matter which one you choose, but as you rank up in experience, you should consider branching out. If your choice ends up being MySQL, which is the one I start with, Cold Steel Ultimate MySQL Bootcamp is a very good course to start with. It covers most of the stuff you'll see on the roadmap, but if you want a better option, I think that Meta's Database Engineer Professional Certificate is one of the best out there in my opinion. It will definitely teach you everything you'll need to know. It got quizzes, exercises, projects, readings. Keep in mind that it's a bit more expensive and it does take longer to complete. For the record, I am not affiliated with these platforms in any way, shape or form. These are courses I've tried myself and I definitely recommend them. With that being said, if you want more detailed information on what courses to take depending on what RDBMS, feel free to check out my Medium article after them watching my video. Link in the description. Throughout your learning journey, you will need to constantly put yourself to the test through solving and interview questions. This will not be reflective of real-world problems, but it will definitely help you get prepared for job interviews. Leco 50 SQL questions is always a good start. If you pay for the advanced list, that would be even better. Try to get comfortable solving up to medium difficulty problems in about 20 to 25 minutes. For the hard ones, I think that's a bit of an overkill and are more geared towards data engineers and stuff. You should also diversify onto other platforms such as Stratascratch or HackRank. Such a thing is definitely going to be helpful but I think overall eco problems are the most challenging ones. So, you learned SQL, you practice some interview questions, now it's time to move on to the next big thing. As I said in the beginning, the next skill you need to learn is a BI tool. Here we got two industry standards in Tableau and Power BI. When it comes to learning tools, what will make you stand out is getting a certification. Not a certificate of completion, a certification. You either pay $250 for Tableau or $165 for Power BI. Both tools are great, I personally love Tableau, but you can't go wrong with either one. Now I know that it can seem expensive, but I'm telling you, a resume hits way different when there is a certification on it. A resume hits way different when there is a certification on it. Make sure that we are going for a cert to get an online preparation course on Udemy to help you out ace the exam. This one right here is really good for the Tableau Data Analyst Certified. I have never tried any course Power BI related, but I'm pretty sure you will find a decent one if you look hard enough. To be an excellent data analyst, you'll need to know Excel. That's probably the worst joke you've ever heard on YouTube, but hey. To be honest, I have a mixed opinion on this since data analysts don't really use Excel. That's more of a tool for business analysts, but the reality is everybody around you loves Excel and a lot of companies list it for the data analyst skill requirements. That of course is questionable. But the main takeaway here is, especially if you are just starting out, meaning you're in the beginning of your career, kind of need to learn it to maximize your chances of getting a first job. Good news is Excel is so easy to learn, plus you don't really need to know that 
that much to be able to do some data work. With that in mind, here's what you'll need to learn to be able to do that data work. Shortcuts to boost your productivity, tax and transformation functions, useful tools and functionalities such as filters and those on the data panel. Aggregation functions like some ifs and count ifs, maybe some VBA basics to automate some tasks, but I think that Power Query covers that in a much better way. You also need to have a good understanding of pivot tables along with the ability to create and customize charts and visualizations. All this shouldn't really take you more than three weeks if I'm being generous. In fact, let me tell you about a skill that you should dedicate more time to and that nobody is talking about. ETL. It stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. In the context of data warehousing, ETL is a process that enables seamless extractions of raw data from diverse sources, transforming it into structured format to then be loaded in analytical platforms. This ensures data accuracy, consistency, and improves accessibility. ETL as a skill has been exploding in demand across all job postings I've seen recently, so I think it might be a smart idea to learn an ETL tool as you are progressing, the most highly respected of which is Microsoft's SSIS. It's probably the best, but if you're on a Mac or interested in learning other tools for some reason, Talent, Informatica, and Pentaho are solid choices as well. Keep in mind that all ETL tools use SQL as a fundamental component to interact with data. This not only shows you how important SQL is, but also gives you a clear indication that most of your learning time should be dedicated to SQL. What? 60% of the time for SQL? What about Python? Python is not essential for data analysts. I know it's a controversial take, but hear me out for a second. Most first-party data lives within relational databases, which means that SQL is your only way to directly interact with said data. For second and third-party data, most tools and CRMs offer a way to extract it, whether by hard downloading a CSV file or establishing API connections, which already falls within the parameter of a data engineer. Excuse me, what about visualizations and dashboards? <laughs> I think it's quite obvious that Python is never beating Tableau or Power BI to make dashboards and track KPIs. In the context of data analytics, Python is used for exploratory data analysis, which is a process of discovering, cleaning, transforming data, and exploring it from a statistical viewpoint to get ready to be fed to a machine learning model. If you find yourself doing all this crazy back-end work to create some kind of live real-time dashboard to then display it on some web app, you might as well just call yourself a software engineer. So to sum up, do data analysts need to know Python? No. No, no. Do you need to learn Python? Yes. Despite all of the above, I still think that you need to learn it simply because it's going to open up a sea of opportunities that will help you eventually take your career to the next level. Because the data analyst role is just a stepping stone for other more technical jobs in the data space. But I digress. Now that you know what skills to prioritize, how do you give yourself an edge over everyone else? It starts in the bed. Get enough good quality sleep. Only 33 of Americans rate their sleep as very good. And sleep is directly correlated to both physical and brain performance. As you're learning, you should consider getting yourself certified in some popular tool. Only 27% of job applicants include certifications in their resume. Using simple math, you're already top 9%. Now, how many of these quality sleepers are job seekers? How many of these certifications are in the data field? You get the idea. Learn SQLs if you're going to teach it and make sure to include a lot of ETL in your projects. You also need to go faster than most and the solution is to take deliberate notes. Obsidian is that guy at the moment, so use it. Then leverage the power of ChatGPT to accelerate your learning. Make sure to ask for detailed explanations as much as you can and understand every Every line of code he throws at you. AI is not gonna replace data analysts anytime soon. A human using AI is going to replace you. Freshen up your LinkedIn profile and start networking. Once you get a job, start learning Python. It's gonna help. Like and subscribe, that's gonna help too. If you need in depth information on how to apply any of these tips in a separate video, let me know in the comments. That's it for this one. I wish you happy learning, everyone. Until the next one.